My name is Amata, and in this Red Gaming Tech video, I am here with yet another detail of a launch. I know today seems to be the day for him, and this time it's from AMD. Now, you may have seen us talking about Raven Ridge a couple of times, as of course it's their Ryzen APU, and now that particular set of chips has been launched, and we have been discussing a lot recently the leaks for the 2500U, but of course we also have the 2700U as well. So, as we discussed yesterday, AMD are finally back in the black, they're finally making profit again, and I definitely think the success of Zen, and Ryzen, Threadripper, Epic, and now Raven Ridge has definitely been a big contributor to that. You know, Ryzen has done a lot for AMD, and I'm not saying it's the only thing, but it's definitely a big part of why AMD are now once more in profit. Now, a bit of a TLDR on Raven Ridge, if perhaps you haven't seen any of our previous efforts on this particular APU. It is a single silicon chip, which has four Zen cores and up to 10 Vega compute units, and actually weighs in at a pretty nice power delivery of 15 watts, and AMD are saying that it has an impressive performance increase in both CPU and GPU performance with 200% for CPU and 128% of GPU performance over their previous gen of laptop processors. Now to start off with, they are only releasing two of these processors onto the laptop market, the Ryzen 7 2700U and the Ryzen 5 2500U, which as I said earlier, we have discussed a couple of times as there has been a couple of leaks. Now both of these have four Zen cores, and they have some minor improvements in those cores, and of course Vega graphics as well. But let's go into the actual specs, shall we, as we have for the Ryzen 7 2700U with Vega 10. It's quad-core with SMT, 2.2GHz base, 3.8GHz turbo, Zen cores of course, and on the 14NM architecture. Again, it has Vega 10, it has 10 CUs and up to 1300MHz. As for the Ryzen 5 2500U, which has Vega 8, is also quad-core with SMT, but only has a 2GHz base and, once again, a 3.8GHz turbo, once, of course on 14NM, has 8 CUs and up to 1100MHz. However, as I already said, they both have 4 cores, but they also both feature simultaneous multi-threading, which of course gives 8 threads in total. Sorry, I just realised I uh, actually misspoke a little bit on the 2500U. It's actually 2.6, sorry, 3.6 gigahertz turbo for the Ryzen 5 2500U. It's like slip of the tongue at the end of the day, so do forgive me there. However, let's move on to some more information. It is going to be having a single CCX, and it's also obviously going to feature a series of cutbacks in comparison to the desktop variation. I've already obviously go, gone through some of them, but the other one that I haven't mentioned is the one megabyte of L3 cache per core rather than the two megabytes, which gives it a total of four megabytes of L3 cache. So, rather interesting, I'm sure you will agree. Now, another thing that I need to mention as well is that those frequencies I discussed earlier for both of these particular APUs are actually the maximum frequencies. AMD at the time of recording at least has not provided base frequencies for the graphics. So that's obviously going to be important. However, AMD were really keen to stress the ability to shift power between the CPU and the GPU to basically have a balance which results in maximum performance at all times. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, okay, that's all great and all, but what about memory? Well, it is actually going to support dual-channel DDR4-2400, but AMD was once again keen to stress that it will be up to the laptop manufacturers to decide whether or not they're actually going to sell any devices with two memory modules. So it has the capability, but of course is entirely up to manufacturers what they actually do. They are, of course, simply providing the APU to be a part of of the bigger hole of the laptop device. And on screen right now you're actually going to see a few slides with the confirmed laptops so far from each of the heavy hitters that we have and you can see the specs of them 
and what they look like and that sort of thing. So you, know, you can see the options that you're having there. If perhaps you are thinking of buying yourself a laptop, then here are the offerings, at least at the start, for Ryzen Mobile. Now, what I'd say what you're mostly interested in here is the performance here of these uh, particular APUs. And AMD were, of course, sharing some slides to give us an idea of what's going on with the performance. But do keep in mind that these are their own internal tests. And, of course, they are going to be promoting and selling the hardware. So as with any internal shown performance metrics, take these with a grain of salt and obviously wait for reviewers to get their hands on these particular machines and see what they actually do in like, you know, third party settings, I guess you could say. But here is what we have so far. And of course, we can kind of compare it to the leaks that we had earlier on this year for the 2500U and how this actually lines up. And on these slides, you can see where they're getting these figures for the performance from. Now, on their slides, they the CPU, at least, was taken using Cinebench R15 in multi-threaded mode. And this is where they got the 200% gain from, because the 2700U scored 719, whereas the last gen that they were using as a comparison, the FX9800P, scored 240. And, of course, we saw the... 112% uh, increase in performance for the graphics card as well. And for those of you wondering, the GPU difference was actually used, sorry, was created by using TimeSpy and the Ryzen 7 2700U scored 915 and the 9800P scored 400, which is that again 129% gain. The 112% increase in performance is actually regarding the improvements in, of course, the GCN compute units, as well as, of course, the peak frequency and all that sort of stuff. So you've got a quite a nice combination of increases going on here with Raven Ridge. Now, one of the more important aspects of a laptop is, of course, how much power this is all consuming, because obviously, if you're going to be using this on the go, you want to know, like, okay, how much battery life am I going to get? And obviously that, that's going to come down to numerous factors and it isn't just going to be down to the APU, obviously. But not having a power-hungry APU is obviously one of the key steps to not having a laptop that dies after two hours and not being plugged in or whatever. But AMD did say that we have a 58% decrease in total power consumption. However, obviously, given that this is an APU, we want to know... What does it do combined? Like, what is the performance difference combined? Because it's not like we can separate these two. It's not like I can get rid of Vega and put in something else in this particular situation. And we have a 270%, 270, just to be clear out there, performance per watt improvements for Ryzen 7, which is pretty damn impressive, as I'm sure you would agree. However, let's, let's move on from there and discuss the gaming performance. And we do have a couple of slides here which give us a look at the performance. Now, this is with the HP NVX360 system, which uses the 2700U, and gives us a few different games to take a look at. Now, the results don't seem like amazingly impressive at first glance. However, AMD did have something to kind of try and bolster it. The... 10 and 8 graphics will support FreeSync 2 panels, especially in the 30 to 60 hertz range. So, basically, what this means is that OEMs is going to have, are going to have rather, a added incentive to produce gaming laptops with FreeSync capable panels at no extra cost, which will give you a better user experience. Again. Let's wait to see what actually happens with real-world tests, but of course it is nice to see exactly what these, this particular machine is going to offer in terms of gaming. Now that is my overview for everything that was revealed for Raven Ridge, but Paul has said to me that he does want to do a deeper dive and a deeper analysis of everything that's going on with it. So if perhaps that, what, that's what you are after, it is coming, but obviously that's going to require a fair bit of work. So he's just saying bear with him and he will get it to you guys as soon as possible. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Ignore my neighbours firing our fireworks for some reason and I'll see you next time.